Sarah wasn't so sure what to think. It was weird that Jed was punching something that still to this point could not hurt him, but at the same time she understood why he was doing it. He made a valid point. The wrenched creatures had taken everything from her. Still one question remained. The one that looks awful, you might have thought of getting another walker beat up on? Sarah asked. Jed scoffed and said, No, this one is special to me. I keep eating it until there's nothing left. You see, when this thing was a leaving, breathing human, he was a bandit that killed my mom right in front of me and my sister. He then took another one sister to the bedrooms and violated her before killing her. Now I use him as my favorite punching bag. A part of me that hopes that when these things turn, they all feel the pain and body that goes through. Sarah frowned. I'm sorry about your mom and your sister. You shouldn't have gone through that, Sarah said. Jed huffed and said, Yeah, well, every day is a battle. He turned to the girl and said, Look, I'm not quite ready to accept what happened to my mom and my sister, but that's because I didn't have people in my group to keep me safe to help me through that. Sarah looked down. She wanted to think that her dad was special and didn't die that he saved her boyfriend. She didn't want to accept the idea that they were dead. Anyway, go on. Jed said as he gestured to the walker that was still bound by its waist. It appeared that it was trying to growl at them, but it came out as a hiss due to its missing lower jaw. Sarah went up to the undead creature as it struggled against the restraints. She wasn't so sure on being not the creature. She had debate on doing it for several minutes. Don't forget what this thing that took from you, Jed said. It took my family, your friends, and your boyfriend. Flashes of her mother, father, and Zeke went through her mind as she balled up her fists. She felt tears forming in her eyes. Don't show it any mercy, Jed said. She looked up and punched the creature in the waist. It wasn't very a hard punch, but she continued to punch as tears flowed from her eyes. There you go, Jed said. After several punches, the creature lost its balance and fell to the ground. As Sarah got closer to it and started punching its face, meanwhile Jed cheered her on. After several more minutes, Sarah backed away from the walker and huffed. Her face was covered in tears. Her cheeks were rosy and her eyes were puffy. She whipped her tear away with her sleeve. She noticed that her knuckles were red. Man, it's been a long time since that thing got a thrashing like that. Pretty impressive, Jed said. He walked up to the girl and held her hands. Don't worry, the swelling will go down by tomorrow. Sarah nodded, she said. I, I don't know if this was right. I don't feel good about it. Jed nodded and he said, Give it a few more tries. The odd feeling you have right now will go away. It's also a recent stress reliever. Sarah nodded and said, Thanks, Jed. I'd like to go back home now. Of course, I'll walk you home, Jed said. Sarah showed a small smile. He may have been weird, but at the same time he seemed choratical. They walked out, to the, out of the shed and onto the sidewalk. Jenna walked next to her as he looked for the house that Sarah lived in. Sarah looked up the stars as she walked home with Jed. She couldn't stop thinking about her father's or Zeke's deaths. Chilly night, Jed said. Sarah looked at him nodding. Yeah, it's a bit, Sarah said. There was a long pause before she finally asked, Why are you helping me? Jed shrugged and said, You really want the truth? Yes, Sarah said. Alright, don't say I didn't warn you. I think you're a really pretty girl and, well, there aren't a lot of girls in this community right now, Jed said. Sarah had noticed this. Most of the community was made up by men, aside from Julie. She seemed to be the other two women within the community, and the only girls that she'd seen as far as the one in the factory where Russell made a scene. I see, Sarah said. Look, I know you're still getting over your loss, so I'm going to take it slow. I'm here for you if you need anything, Jed said. Sarah nodded and she said, Thanks, Jed. No problem, Jed said as they continued to walk past the houses until they arrived at the house that Sarah's group was in. All right, have a good night, Jed said. Thanks, you too, and thanks for walking me home, Sarah said. You're welcome. See you t sometime tomorrow, Jed said as he walked away. Yeah, see you. Sarah replied as she walked up to the house and went inside. She looked over to see Luke in a chair. He didn't seem happy. Sarah ignored and went downstairs. Get back here, Luke snapped, which made her wince. Sarah didn't like she was told, so she went over to Luke. I don't know what the hell you were thinking by going with him like that. He could have hurt you. 
Sarah looked down and allowed him to berate her. It was just like what her dad used to. But now that he was dead, she had Luke breathing down her neck. Sarah, we don't know what these people all that well yet. We don't know if they're dangerous. Why do you care? Sarah asked. It's not just me, Sarah. Everyone cares about you. We're worried about you, Luke said. I'm grieving. You didn't give Nick crap when Connie died, and no one gave you a hard time when your mom and dad both died, and both of you grieved a lot longer than me, Sarah said. Luke gave an unpleasant jump upon hearing this. I... that was different, Sarah. Nick and I didn't go off running with strangers. We're... you're... He released a sign and said, You're a girl. There's a lot of sick freaks in the world that would want to do unspeakable things to you just because you're a tiny girl. Maybe they would kill me? Sarah said. That's a um, high possibility, Luke said. We don't want those things to happen to you. You need to be a little more cautious of people who you can trust. Sarah nodded. She didn't care what Luke had to say. If anything, she wanted to go up to bed and curl into the ball and cry herself to sleep again for the night. Luke sighed. He must have realized that he wasn't getting anywhere with Sarah. All right, go to bed. Sarah obliged and went upstairs to the room that she shared with Clementine. She entered the room and saw the girl was thrashing around in her sleep. Sarah felt bad for the girl and she knew that she wouldn't be the same again ever since Carver tortured her. She was about to head over to bed when until she heard Clementine release a yelp. She looked over to Clementine who was huffing. The girl was looking over to Sarah with a frightening stare. It's okay, Clem. It's just me, Sarah said. Clementine must have had a nightmare. She went over and sat on the bed next to the frightened girl. Immediately, Clementine clung onto Sarah and cried. Sarah was surprised. The young girl had always been brave, and now she was terrified. It, it's okay, Sarah said as she returned the hug and started to rub the child's back in an attempt to comfort her. She continued to do this as Clementine's crying turned into whimpering. It's okay, Clem. It was just a bad dream, Sarah said. It was worse than that, Clementine sobbed. Shh, it's okay, Sarah said. She continued to comfort the child until she eventually fell asleep. Sarah gently laid her back on the bed and tucked her in. Sarah then took a look at her, her glasses. After she took them off and placed them on the nightstand, she then laid the bed on and thought about the happy times there were her father and boyfriend were alive at the cabin. It wasn't long until after she fell asleep. Clementine opened her eyes. She remembered what happened last night and how Sarah did to comfort her until she had fallen back asleep. Her dream was about Carver kidnapping her and torturing her until he had broken her. He then ordered her to kill Luke who was tied up to a chair. She remembered how he pleaded for her in the dream and all she did was laugh before shooting him. It sent chills down her spine, come to think of it. She stayed curled up in the ball and thought of what happened to her life so far. Why did this have to happen? Why could she have just lived a normal life? Why could she not have her real parents back? These questions in her imagination of what could have been kept her from moving on for hours. Eventually, she noticed Sarah move and groan. The older teen opened her eyes. Morning, Clem, Sarah said. She reached over to her glasses on the nightstand sat upright and got out of bed. She looked back to the child with a perplexed stare. Clem, are you alright? Clementine didn't respond. Do you mean need me to go get mommy? Sarah asked. My mommy's dead, Sarah. Like yours, Clementine said. The teen jumped. Wait, Rebecca's dead? The teenager started to panic. How? When? Clementine shook her head and she said, She's not my real mommy. I want my real mommy. Sarah huffed and she seemed to be relieved that Clementine was talking about her biological mother. Clem, I know Alvin and Rebecca aren't your biological parents, but they love you regardless. Clementine shook her head and said, Just leave me alone. She turned away from Sarah. There was a long pause before she heard the teenager walk out of the room. Sarah walked downstairs and saw everyone who lived in the house staring at her. The only person missing aside from Clementine was Genevieve. More likely, they had Shell looking after the baby. Sarah, we need to talk about your behavior, Rebecca said. Sarah entered the living room as she was still stunned by what Clementine said. Is everything all right? Where's Clementine? Alvin asked. Sarah shook her head and said, She's not acting like herself. Like you? Matthew asked. Sarah nodded. She wants her biological mother, and she doesn't want to talk to me. 
She seemed very depressed. Oh no, Rebecca said. I knew she wasn't okay. Damn it. She got up and gestured to Alvin to follow her upstairs. What do you mean she's not alright? Alvin asked as he got up. Think about it. Clem was tortured by Carver, and she lost someone close to her. It only made sense that she was traumatized, Luke said. Rebecca nodded in confirmation before heading downstairs. She then paused and gripped Sarah's arm just to get her attention. You and I are still going to have a lengthy conversation, but now you need to talk to everyone else. I don't care if you don't want to. We love you and we worry about you. Just because your daddy isn't here anymore, it doesn't mean you can't do whatever you want. Sarah was shocked by this, but not in response. It felt almost encouraging for her to say this. Rebecca released her arm and went upstairs with Alvin falling behind her. Luke sighed and said, Sarah, we still love you, honey. We want you to be, feel safe and happy. I know it doesn't compare to what you went through since I'm older, but I lost my parents too. It's not the same. You don't understand, Sarah said. But we do. We've all lost people, Sarah, Luke said. Sweetie, we are all very sorry you lost your father and boyfriend like that, and we're here for you. We're going to get you through this, Sarita said. Sarah then looked at her head and said, I don't want help. I want them back. Heck, I know you do, kiddo, Luke said. Right now, you need to start listening to us. You should have never gone along with that boy, Jed, last night. Why? Sarah inquired. She crossed her arms over her chest. Like I said last night, we don't know who these people are if they're dangerous, Luke said. A part of her wondered and could understand why Luke was being cautious, but another part of her hated this. Why do they keep babying her? So what, you want someone to babysit me for the whole time? Sarah inquired. No, that's not what I'm saying, Luke said. Sarah, we just want you to be careful around these people until we're for sure they, what we know what they want from us, Matthew said. You don't seem to show some sense of caution back at the ski lodge, Sarah said to Matthew. Sarita frowned and she said, That was different then. We didn't have children to protect you, Becca, and Gil, and Genevieve. I'm not a little kid anymore, Sarah said. On the contrary, you are, Matthew said. You're not grown up yet. Whatever. Sarah muttered as she went towards the door. Sarah, hold on. Where are you going? Luke said. Somewhere where people can't, don't treat me like a freaking baby. Sarah snapped as she opened the door and slammed it shut, but balled her fist up as tears came down from her eyes. She couldn't stand being coddled anymore, especially by everyone inside. If anyone was going to coddle her, it was going to be her family or Zeke. She stomped down the sidewalk and went towards Jed's house. She needed some time away from the group. She was sick and tired of people treating her differently. They would have never done this to her or Nick. The only person they coddled her was because of her anxiety problems. The door that opened to Clementine and Sarah's room, the young girl saw a pair of footsteps approaching her. Someone sat down next to her on the bed and she felt a soothing hand on her arm that was covered up by the blanket. Hi baby, everything okay? Her adoptive mother's voice was said. She didn't respond, she just wanted to be left alone. I think it would feel better if you got something to eat, Rebecca said. Again, no response. Rebecca continued to rub the girl's arm in a soothing manner. Alvin went over and crouched down in front of the girl. She looked up at him before looking away. I want my real parents, Clementine finally said. Aw, honey, your real mommy and daddy are in heaven right now, Alvin said. I don't want them there. I want them here, Clementine said. It sounded like she was at the verge of crying. I know, baby. Rebecca and I would do anything so you could have them back. But it's not possible, Alvin said. Clementine, baby, we adopted you and promised to look after you like your real mommy and daddy loved you. I know it's not the same, but we're here for you, Rebecca said. Clementine cried and she said, It's not fair. I know, baby, I know, Rebecca said. How about you let dad get hold of you for a while? I'll make you something to eat. Clementine was still in distraught. She whimpered as Rebecca looked, got up. Alvin also tried to pick up the small girl. She tried to wrestle out of his grip, which was something that she had never done before. All she wanted was to be left alone. It's okay, baby, Alvin said to reassure her. She continued to fight with him, which was in vain, since he was way stronger than her. Eventually, Alvin picked her up and put, held her in his arms. 
He rocked her back and forth to soothe the child, to which seemed it worked. 